Watch out, it's a live mic. This is Mark McNeese in New York City with my co-host Rick Rose in Shreveport, Louisiana. And you're listening to another edition of Live Mike Weekend. Happy Saturday, Rick, and welcome to another Live Mike Weekend. What's going on? Good morning. We're live from Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin today. Sounds like I'm repetitive, but that's the name of the city. Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. And you're in New York today, huh? Um, a city so nice they named it twice. Uh, yes, of course, I'm in New York. I'm, well, I'm not always here. A lot of times I'm at the New Jersey house. Speaking of which, it is our two-year anniversary. My husband, Frank, and I got married two years ago today. <laughs> so happy anniversary to him. We got lots of fun stuff planned. I can't discuss it on air because he doesn't know. It's a secret. That's awesome. That's fun. And I'm with my family. We do a family reunion, just my immediate family every year. Well, this is only the second year we've done it, but it's a lot of fun as the family grows with young ones and all that. So I'm at a water park, Mark, and you know, I'm of that age. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be one of those guys that wears my T-shirt in the water. Is that okay? Oh, yes, that's me. I don't know if yeah. I would. I would just not go in the water. But yes. I know. I, yeah. I can't not go because then the nephews and nieces would be disappointed. And I really have a good time doing it. I'm just... I just don't want the man boobs showing today. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on, Mark? Lots going on in the world, huh? Yep. Let's get to our topics. Well, I want to start one. This is a surprise one for you. I was going to talk about uh, Caitlyn Jenner, which I'm going to talk about in a minute here. But also, as Halloween's coming, so I had lost track of some of the points of the story. I wanted to talk about the, the manslaughter suit against Caitlyn Jenner. As you remember, back in February, uh, Bruce Jenner was involved in a four-car accident. Well, the... the uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Detective has completed his study and the police investigation shows that Jenner may actually be up for a manslaughter charge. If charged, which is very likely, she, now Caitlin, will face a year in prison. But it's a missed... Oh, oh really? I thought it was a misdemeanor. Yeah, no, it, it's... Uh, they said there may not be felon charges, but if charged with this particular uh, um, suit uh, thing, she will definitely be spend a year in prison here's the interesting thing she wasn't speeding but what happened was she was going too fast or he at the time so and it's a weird story because he committed the crime or well, it wasn't really a crime but he's being charged but she's being sentenced possibly. that's really interesting that's like other like some strange otherworldly thing it is who thought that would happen and i mean it's weird in the court records are pulling evidence from bruce jenner and statements from bruce jenner do they have to you know requalify them but yes it is a misdemeanor charge but she would still face up a year in county jail it wouldn't be prison it would be county jail yeah i don't think she's going to jail but i, I do i i have thought for a while now like it really bothered me that <clears throat> nobody seemed to give a shit about the dead woman her name was kim howe she was 69 Right. And in the whole the whole uh, media phenomenon of Caitlyn, call me Kate Jenner, you know I'm not a huge fan. I respect her for a number of reasons and other, other things, but the, the phenomenon I don't like. And it, it just bugged me. It's like a woman died. A woman, a human, a human life ended in that accident. Nobody gave a shit. Nobody cared. She still got her hero award from ESPN and the courage stuff and all this shit. She's like an icon. She, she's a Republican. She, she's conservative. She says conservative shit. She kills a woman in a crash, and we just keep giving her a pass. So I just want people to know the woman's name was Kim Howe. She had family. She had loved ones, and she's dead. Hey again, Rick, just in case anybody notices a little jump there in a slightly different audio sound. Um, the call dropped, but we're back on. So I said my piece about Kate and... Uh, are you ready to move on, or you have more to say? No. I, so anyway, my point earlier in the conversation was that. Uh, so while looking at some of the details of the conversation, what we just had, I found out that one of the new costumes Spirit Halloween is coming up with this year, because October is just around the corner, is a Caitlyn costume. That's weird. It's weird. The representatives say, "Oh no, this is not a problem. We're not making fun of everybody." At Spirit Halloween, we create a wide range of costumes that are often based upon. Celebrities, public figures, heroes, and superheroes. We feel that Caitlyn Jenner is all of the above, and that should be celebrated. Of course, uh, a, a statement came from the National Center for Transgender Equality saying, there's no tasteful way to celebrate Caitlyn Jenner or respect transgender people this way on the one night of the year when people use their most twisted imaginations to pretend to be villains and monsters. So 
So we'll see how popular that costume remains. Yeah, I think I think it's weird. It's, I mean, I don't know. Maybe is it is it weird to be, go dressed as uh, any live person, Hillary Clinton, Richard Nixon? On the one hand, you think it's weird because I automatically think they're making fun of her. On the other hand, oh, they yeah. go dre- they go dressed as real people all the time. Yeah, I know, but usually when they're real people, like it's a Hillary or a Nick, a Nick Nixon costume, you always think it's because they're mocking them. I don't know if it's weird. Well, we'll we're, assu- we're assuming they're, that she's being mocked. We don't know that. I mean, maybe the, the Vanity yeah. Fair, why not go dressed as the Vanity, Vanity Fair cover? That was pretty hideous. That's a good point. People go dressed like Jay Lopez, uh, Jennifer Lopez or uh, Kardashian all the time, and they probably just want to be big-boobed. And maybe people are being p- too sensitive. I don't know. I know. Maybe I am. Ring, ring, ring. Speaking of being too sensitive, because I, I mean, this wasn't going to be my first topic, but it kind of, since we're talking about sensitivities, I got really upset the other day because the Jared Fogler, the subway spokesperson, sp- spokesman, mm, 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 mm. is going to prison for child molestation. Okay, great. He's a child molester, horrible person. That's fine. But the New York Post ran a cover saying, you know, something along the lines of enjoy a foot long in, in, at Rikers or whatever in prison. Oh, well, my. And I got really upset because I have a prison uh, sexual assault is a really big issue for me. It, and nobody seems to, well, most people don't seem to care. Prison rape jokes are not funny. They, and prison bitch jokes are not funny. They weren't funny on Will and Grace. They're not funny on uh, Two Broke Girls. They're not funny, period. And I, and, um, because, and I just read a paper by, so we had dinner with some friends, and one of them is just becoming an MSW. And, he wrote a paper on prison sexual assault, and I read it, and it was just, it was fabulous, but but also very disturbing. And just briefly, for one thing, I didn't I never realized was that a high percentage of prison sexual assaults are committed by female corrections officers against male inmates because they have the power. Um, but anyways, it's a horrible thing. I find that it doesn't. In our culture, our society just looks the other way because we have this idea that if you're sentenced to prison, you deserve to get sodomized. You know. Uh, no matter what your crime is, and it's it's uh, it really pisses me off. And then I saw some people defending it online. Oh, oh, have a sense of humor. Just have a sense of humor. And I thought, okay, so let's tell retarded jokes. Let's let's tell jokes about retarded people and see how funny that is. Or how about some Alzheimer's jokes? Those would be, those would be a real laugh riot. Some things are just not funny. Period. And rape is not There's funny. Some it's it's not funny not against about- a woman, and it's not funny against a prisoner. Well, that's the whole thing with Donald Trump. You know, his comments, are they really funny? No, they're misogynistic, and why are we talking about voting for him? But I agree with you. And what I don't understand is a paper that, that's supposed to, you know, honor the, the you know, journalistic integrity. He certainly hasn't when they made that headline. I don't get that. But well, anyway, post, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, the Post is not, I like, the last thing I would consider journalistic integrity. But it was just an issue. Point. It came up, and people were, you know, I was really livid about it, and... You know, well, well he's, I'm going to have him on a podcast. And now he's he's being like the Catholic Church. He's paying off the, these families a hundred thousand dollars each. Is what the last thing I read. And in his statement from the spokespeople, it says basically that should be the money to get them started with their, you know, with uh, counseling and all that kind of stuff. So we'll okay. see how that plays well, out. He's got the money. Yeah, I want to talk about some big news in Illinois, just south of me here in Wisconsin. Of course, they are uh, Thursday. They signed a law banning mental health therapist from trying to change a young person's sexual orientation or gender identity. We call it um, conversion therapy. Um, so it's illegal. Now, they're not the first state to do it. Um, they're actually the fourth state, California, New Jersey, of course, Oregon, and D.C. itself have laws on the books. But this is the first time, and I love this, that they actually the grounds for it. And it was signed by a Republican governor that goes to show that I think the days of attaching certain things to certain parties may eventually fade away. Uh, certain belief systems. But anyway, it was the first time that the grounds for it, Mark, were actually based on consumer fraud. Uh, they basically said it's fraudulent. You can't tell someone that they're going to be able to come in and convert to being straight if they come in as a gay man or a, a gay woman. You can't do that. That's fraud. It's not going to happen. You can't promise that. Oh, I wow. love that. Yeah, that's an uh-huh. interesting um, approach to that. Very interesting. But anyway, I think it's interesting. Once the law takes effect on January first. The violators will face discipline from their state licensing board. Um, it should be interesting. This is, they said it's not reparative therapy. There's nothing to repair. Right. Absolutely. I'm not broken. Don't fix me. I mean, I'm broken in other ways, right. but not that way. <laughs> exactly. And uh, Ashley Madison, the website for um, 
people looking to have affairs. It was hacked. Huge news all over the place. Millions signed up, including Josh Duggar, by the way. But um, there, there's been so much gloating over this, and I see it as two separate issues. The adultery issue, which many people are you know, morally offended by, and the hacking issue. And to me, it's not acceptable. Hacking is wrong, period. And it's not acceptable to me. It doesn't make it okay that their information was stolen and publicized because they're fucking around on their spouses. That does not make it okay. Because if that's okay, then why not steal your information from Target or Macy's or anywhere else or, or Citibank? You know, there, it, to me, it's, it's unconditional. It, you, I cannot accept the stealing and publication of private, private information. Because if I'm going to accept it for these folks ha running around on their spouses then I have to accept it if it happens to me for any reason. Um, and that's where I stand on that. And there's too much gloating. It's like, there's too much gloating. And it's like, people love to be moralistic and all this other crap. And it's none of your fucking business. And neither is their personal information. No, I'm with you totally. Now I have feelings about the website itself. I'm sure you do too. But it's not a place to judge on what happened. Um, yeah, certainly private information. Um, one of the people that was, uh, you know, been, in, you know, called about that was using it apparently was the head of the, the party down here in uh, or down in Louisiana, the head of the uh, Republican Party. He said he works for a law firm that was involved in an investigation, and that's why his card was charged seventeen hundred dollars so far with the investigator. <laughs> but of, <laughs> of course, it blew things up down in um, in the lovely state of Louisiana where things are crooked. On the good side, Mark, Tuesday marks um, the 10th year anniversary of uh, the storm, as we call it in the south, and that would be Katrina, the big hurricane that came through 10 years ago and devastated the city. I say it's good news, though, because a lot of good things have come from it. You know, many people say in darkness comes light, and the city is really repaired, and a lot of the conversations, if you read a lot of the stories that have come out over the weekend and into next week, are the human side of it, but a lot are about, like, tourism and how the city is a better city, um, you know, people like uh, Angelina and Brad going in and cleaning up the city. But the story I like came out this week. It talks about homelessness dropping 85% in New Orleans since Hurricane Katrina. Um, though the rates are still high, they remain lower than a number of other major cities, including D.C. and New York City. But the good news is, um, with its peak after Katrina, when there were a lot of tent cities and a lot of people finding their way, there were about 12,000 homeless people. Today, when they did a recent count, it showed 1,700 people. So that's a dramatic, dramatic change in the city as it starts to heal. Um, and it's all, you know, there's a group called Unity of Greater New Orleans. It's a collaboration of homeless agencies. They've come together to do the study, but moreover, they've come together to see, you know, take a slice of where the city's at. And um, they say there's been extensive work and it will continue, um, you know, in the, in the route it's headed. So great news for New Orleans. Very good news. And in very good news for the entertainment industry, Donald Trump continues to uh, ride the wave. Man, he's just shaking it up, and he's um, ahead in the the Republicans are terrified, the other, his rivals. It's really interesting. I don't think he could win a general election, but I don't make assumptions because I could be wrong. I just don't think America is going to put this man in the White House because that's a scary thought. Like, is he going to tell Putin or Angela Merkel or some other world leader you know, that they're fat and ugly and, and stupid. Is that what he, is that the kind of president we're going to have? I don't think he could win a general, but it's really entertaining to watch what he's doing to the, uh, to the Republican race. No, it is. And, and at that side, that, you know, that one character that came out, nuts, these nuts or these nuts. Did you read about this independent presidential candidate? Yep. The 15 year old, these nuts. And this 15 year old from Iowa came out, these, these nuts. He's testing higher than a lot of the Republicans for certain, higher than Scott Walker in polls, higher than Fiorina, Huckabee, Paul, all the other fools. And of course, he's play, placing higher actually than a lot of the Democrats, including Webb and Captain O'Malley. But what's interesting about it is I think you're right. I think that, that him coming into the game here is no different than Trump. You know, Trump's pulling high, people are talking to him, now they're buzzing about these nuts, but it's, they're both buffoons and they're both jokes. And I think that's the lesson we'll learn from that is that polls are inaccurate. And we get right down to it, we'll see what really happens. I'm with you. Yes. So um, we'll see what happens. Now, did you have a final or is, are we done? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I don't have my bell with me, folks. That's always changed topic. I do only in that. I'm in Wisconsin. The story broke yesterday and it's kind of relevant. We have, you know, we've been following with time all the 
gay sports people that come out. The big story was Michael Swan was the first gay football player. Uh, before he was actually, now he's playing up in Canada, is an official football player. Uh, up until then, he was a rookie uh, in waiting and bounced from team to team. Well, did you see the first official baseball player come out as gay? Have you read that news? I did. I, minor leagues? or Yeah. I, where was it? Yeah, yeah. He's in minor leagues for the Brewers. That's why the story's relevant. The like Brewers team back out Montana. 20-year-old boy named David, call him a boy, sorry. 20-year-old man named David Benson. Um, he won't make, he made his public statement about it, and that's it. He's not taking interviews. He just wanted to get it off. He's back and move on with his life and be a ball player. So I really wish him the best. But now we've done it. We had basketball with Jason Collins, and we had football with Michael Swan. And now we have David Denson coming out uh, in baseball. And what I love about the story, all three of them are black men. And I think there's something to be said about that. Uh, as we talk about the down low and a lot of the issues in the African-American community with embracing their sexuality, I think it's going to... It's going to even push that a little farther, those discussions. Well, at this rate, I mean, what's next? Like I, I, ice skaters, figure skaters, or, or <laughs> ballet dancers? Rick, this is astonishing. <laughs> the doors are open. We got <laughs> The first New York ballet dancer comes out of straight. How about that? Oh, my God. That's huge. <laughs> Courage Award. Huge news. <laughs> Someday we'll all be over, Mark. You have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy yourself. Happy anniversary to Frank and you. Thank you. We're going to have a great day, and uh, we'll be back next weekend with more fun stuff. Thanks, everybody. Bye.